Hi everyone, my name is Sharon Rice. I'm the Makerspace Librarian here at the Rawlings Library and I want to thank you guys for joining us tonight um, for our Creative Aging Sew a Felted Llama program brought to you this evening by the Collective Pueblo and a generous grant from the Next 50 organization. Um, this program is intended for people ages 55 and up, but if you guys are joining us tonight, it's perfectly fine. Hopefully you all have craft kits that have been provided for you um, at the Rawlings Library with our curbside service, but if not, don't worry about it. Um, the craft kits will be available on a limited basis after this program, and you can also pick them up at the Collective Pueblo store um, right there on the River Rock, right across the street from Black Hills Energy on Victoria. Um, I'm really excited to bring this to you. It's the first of our live demonstrations of um, our creative aging program, if I make any mistakes, bear with me. But let's go ahead and get started on the actual program because I know everyone's really eager to make their llamas tonight. So I'm going to scooch over and we're going to get started um, with the craft here. This is the craft kit that you should have um, if you reserved one through our service and picked it up on curbside. I do have about five left, so if you'd like to call the main Rawlings number at 562-5600 and ask for Sharon if you need another kit, um, I will give them at a first come, first serve basis, so please give me a call there. Um, but let's go ahead and get started. I've already begun this project here so that you can see where we're going. So you should have two white felted llamas that look exactly like this guy in your kit and a little piece of pink felt and a little piece of tannish felt. On your instruction sheet here, um, Melissa from Collective has very generously provided us with a couple of different templates to cut out the ear pieces of your llama and to cut out the mouth. Um, she says it's the face, I think it's the mouth, maybe it's the muzzle, I'm not sure. It's the nose and mouth area of your llama. Um, you can glue them on using whatever glue you'd like to use. She mentions that stick glue works here, but because I am a crafty lady and I like things to dry really firmly and securely, I'm using good old fashioned tacky glue. Um, tacky glue is great when you're working with felt because it is, as the name says, tacky. Um, which means that it dries quicker and it holds the fibers of your fabric together better. So that's what I glued my little llama's muzzle area and ears on with. So if you need to, I know this is a live feed, but we'll continue to have this available for you to stop and start the, the video as we go along. This would be a nice time, if you're watching this not in real time, to pause and cut out your ears and your mouth and get them glued onto your llama. Um, we're going to go ahead here in the live stream and move on from there to sewing our little llama's face on. Um, but if you want to pause the video at any time after we go live and go back to watch it, you can totally do that. The video will be archived. So if you guys can see here, I'm going to move the instruction sheet out of the way. Um, I've already started to sew my llama's face on here. I'm making his little eye right now. And it, I think, is easier to sew if you are not a great sewer to make him sleeping. Um, the sleeping line would be one stitch from here to here and then two stitches for your eyelashes. I'm going to go ahead and sew that next one for you guys so you can see it. So hopefully I don't poke myself because I would. Here we go. So then there's just one long stitch for your Sleeping Llama's eye. I'm trying to get this caught up on his ear for some reason. There we go. Now, if you like or really like things really super duper simple, you can just leave his eye one stitch like that. But I think that llamas have beautiful, beautiful eyelashes, and we want to make sure that they have eyelashes. So I'm going to add some eyelashes to my llama. So I'm going to go right down the middle of that first stitch here. I'm splitting this because I actually think it looks better that way, but you don't, you can do it ever you'd like. And I'm going to add one eyelash. So there you can see I've done one eyelash. 
and I'm going to go to the very end of his eye here and put in a second eyelash. And I'm going to make that second eyelash a little bit longer than the first one. So it really just looks like he's seeping. So there we go. The llama's eyelashes are in. So the next thing that we're going to be making is the llama's mouth. On the instructions, it says that you can do a French knot here. I find a French knot to be a relatively difficult embroidery stitch if you're not super comfortable with needlework. So I'm actually just going to do a cross stitch for his nose um, and see how that looks. So hold on one second. Is it going to work for me? If you do, we'll find out. Maybe I'll poke my finger. That'll be great. Hey, wrong spot. There we go. So, if you glued it on, it might be a bit stiff, and it might be a little bit hard for you to get your needle in. So I'm actually going to use the needle to help me push it through. That's not in any way a cheater sort of way to do this. You can totally use anything that you'd like to help you get your needle in if your dexterity is giving you some problems. You know, if any of you guys know me out of here, you know that I have some dexterity issues in my own hands as well. So anything that works is what's good for you. There we go. And there is my llama's little cross-stitch nose. And you know my llama looks cute like that, or if you want to, you can give him a little mouth with a smiley face. And I will start doing that here too. And I think that I like him looking just like that with his little sleepy llama face. So I'm going to tie this off on the back and we're going to move on to the next step of our llama. Alright, so if we are looking at our llama instructions here, the next thing that we're going to be doing is making the llama's blanket. So included in your kit are three different colors of brightly colored felt. Um, you can either just embroider your felt with a bunch of different colors of floss, like this purple here that I have. They should have come with three colors in your kit. Or you can get crazy creative and cut the pieces up and make your own really colorful blanket like I did here. So I glued some pieces on and then I did some different little stitches. Some mattress stitch around the edge, some little stars here in the middle. I wanted it to kind of have a Peruvian look. I was going to try to fringe it, but that's crazy pants. We're not doing that. So we're going to go ahead and this guy does not get sewn on. We're going to glue him on. Um, it's going to be thick, particularly if you've already glued it. And so we don't need to try to shove that needle through anything else. But when we're um, gluing this fellow on, make sure that you leave a little bit of space in between the blanket and the top of your llama that is not glued because we're going to need to sew this llama together at the end of this. And you don't want to try to push your needle through three layers of felt and two layers of glue. That's a, that's a horrible idea. So leave about two or three millimeters, like an eighth of an inch, on the top of your llama's blanket so that you can uh, sew your llama together. And if at the end you want to glue it down a little bit further, then you can do that after it's all put together. So let's get him glued on. Again, I'm using tacky glue, not a glue stick because it's just a personal preference when I'm working with felt. Let's see if any glue comes out. Oh my gosh, too much glue. Live programming, friends. So let's just go ahead and do that. I kind of want to wipe this off. In my mask, because that's all I have. <laughs> and I'll wash my mask. <laughs> and come back here and just stick them on. 
And the reason that I like tacky glue is even though I kind of made a whoopsie there on this fellow, I'm going to just clean off that excess right there, it's going to stick on to that really quickly. So let, we'll let him sit for just a second. And while we're letting him sit and dry, I will talk to you about sewing on the back part of your llama. So, like I said, it comes with two pieces, and it's going to stick to me because now I have glue all over my fingers. Um, but it comes in two pieces, and we're going to want to make sure that when we're putting them together, we're matching up those pieces pretty nicely. So I'm turning him over just so that we can make sure to see where he fits and pieces line up. And I think that he looks pretty good. All right, flip him back over. So, here we go. I am going to start stitching this fella together because believe it or not already, Tacky Glue has gotten that really nice and dry. It's not gonna be going anywhere. And you, again, have three different colors of floss. You can choose whatever color you'd like to stitch your guy together. Um, it helps to use what she's calling pearl cotton, which is a bit thicker, it's shinier. It's really pretty thread for sewing things together, um, unlike the black, which is thinner, so that you can do that fine work there. And I'm probably going to start sewing my llama together right here at the bottom of his foot. And the stitch that you can use, you can either use whip stitch or mattress stitch. You recommend using mattress stitch, but if you're not a seamstress, which I am not, you're going to go ahead and use a whip stitch. But when you're doing this, what I would say is that we want to make sure that we're being really, really deliberate um, with our stitches, making sure that they look pretty, that they're clean and even. I think a lot of times when we're doing stuff in the world, we rush, rush, rush to get through the end of our projects and we don't take the time to really be careful and be contemplative when we're making our art, and our art kind of suffers. So this is a good way to slow down, be a bit mindful of your creation as you're sewing these things together, and just really taking the care to make it look as pretty as you possibly can. I think that's a really important thing as we're crafting to remember that this is good for our brains, um, it really helps us continue to build those creative synapses that are there. We never, ever, ever stop learning, and it's really important to take that time to be creative, I think. This is why I do my job, although you're going to laugh at me as I'm saying this because my stitches are not real even, but that's okay. So, I'm just going to go along here and I'm going to sew them together. I think they're really pretty. You could use this as maybe um, an ornament on your Christmas tree. If you have a Christmas tree that's a lot of different kinds of animals, um, you could use it um, to hang in the rear view mirror of your car. I think that'd be a, a pretty thing to do. Um, you could just use it for looking cute in your fairy garden, which is probably what I'm going to do with it because I have one. I suppose if you really got crazy, you could fill it up with catnip and give it to your cat. And it does take a minute, even though I'm kind of going quickly so that you can see where we are. Get this all sewn together pretty. Everything else. So as I keep sewing, remember that you're going to want to keep the spaces in between your stitches here um, pretty small. Because we are going to stuff this guy with some polyfill, and we don't want it leaking out the edges. That would be pretty disastrous, and everyone would be sad. I've got a tangle, of course I do, because I always do. There we go. And let's just sew him along. So when you get up to his head and neck area like I am, really make sure that you're taking care to get all of the edges of your llama friend here together and even. You can take this out. It's relatively easy to pull cotton thread out of felt. But there's only so much thread in the kit, and you don't want to have to redo your work and get frustrated with it if you made a mistake and it's not together nicely. And if you're having a hard time threading your needles, sometimes that's, that's always a problem, 
I'm not sure if you guys are aware, but you can always use your phone and use the camera and magnify it over your needle so that you can see the hole better. And then you're able to thread your needle with a bit more success than you would if you were just trying to thread it at home without using, just using your eyeballs. I can never see it. Truthfully, I can never see it. So we're on the little llama's head now, and I'm just going to go around his ear. Here, just making sure that I do have all those edges all matched up beautifully. Okay, I keep getting stuck. That's silliness. So next week, if you guys are going to plan on joining us, we will be doing yet another kit from Melissa at Collective Bubble. Um, this one will be lavender flowers. If you've not ever been to Melissa's shop, please do take a visit. She's got absolutely lovely things down there. And she's a great um, local partner for us here with um, Next 50, a really awesome artist. And just a really nice lady. see I think that he looks really cute and pretty fuzzy um, as we sewing along here it actually makes him look like he's got some fluffy fur like a real llama alright so I'm just gonna finish his ear and kind of go around his head and then I'm gonna show you guys how to stuff him because watching me just sew this llama is gonna take a little bit of time it's gonna be pretty boring And again, if you guys are really comfortable doing finer stitches and pretty embroidery, please absolutely do. Remember that this is your creation and I'm just showing you one way how to do it, but there's all sorts of different ways to do stuff. And if you can think of a way that's better, or maybe that's a better blue situation, or you prefer to use the mattress stitch or you've been successful at doing French knots, which I have not been, um, go ahead and do whatever suits you. I really would love it if you posted pictures of your finished llamas on this Facebook thread um, because it would make me super duper happy to get to see them. Alright, so I've just about finished his head. So I'm going to tie off my um, string here and I'm going to show you guys a little bit of how to get him stuffed um, and then we will end our time together. So if you are doing this at home, you're going to sew all the way around your llama with that little space left here so you can get your stitches in under his blankie and I would suggest leaving his tummy open and then you can just pop him open really wide and take this fiber fill that came in your kit and shove him down in there. If you're having a hard time getting this fiber into like the tiny places of your llama, say like your ears or your legs or his little tail, you can use a toothpick, a chopstick, a knitting needle, a dowel, um, whatever you've got lying around that's somewhat thin, even a pencil, although be careful with it so that it doesn't poke through and color your felt, to kind of get that fiber fill all the way up into these little tiny areas of your llama. So what you would do is you would just get, open him up, see it's right here at his tummy, and just kind of push that up and inside of him. And he will look nice and poofy when you're done. So, you can fill him as full or as not full as you would like to fill your llama. Um, but I would recommend, because we have not stitched him closed incredibly securely, to not fill him too much. Do not overfill your llama. He's better skinny than fat. All right, guys. That is me showing you how to do the llama for now. So I'm going to slide over here. I really do appreciate uh, you guys coming to the program, even virtually. I've missed getting to spend time with every single one of the people in my classes. Um, this is my virtual hug from me to you. Thank you so much for attending. I can 
hardly wait to spend some time with you guys next week making um, the lavender flowers from Collective. Um, so please tune in here next week, Wednesday, 6.30 p.m. We'll make the flowers from Collective and we'll have a good time together. Thanks for tuning in and have a wonderful evening.